So what we want to try to do now is to develop a wedge function that has some of the nice properties of the fixed wedge. So it's uh, simple, it's going to be rigid, but it's not as stark as a fixed wedge. So it, doesn't, it just doesn't stay completely fixed all the time. Okay? Um, and so we'll call that a rigid wedge instead of a fixed wedge. That's another, uh, that's going to be another wedge function that we'll consider. So let's look at that. Another possible wedge function is to have a rigid wedge. So, um, how do rigid wedges look like? Um, so, the simplest um, wedge function that we can think of that generalizes the fixed wedge but that's not completely fixed would be something like this. Uh, so, a rigid wedge would take this form. W, and we could make it. Um, so, this is a little bit arbitrary. We can pick what we want to uh, have the wedge function. Uh, depend on um, so empirical evidence suggests that wedges as I was saying um, do depend on productivity that seems to be the main factor that influences wedges paid to people how productive they are which you know is not very surprising if you're very productive you're more likely to be paid more if you're not very productive you're likely to be paid less, and if your productivity fluctuates, your wage may fluctuate also. And in fact, if we think a little bit about the real world, there are kind of contract features of contract that, that capture exactly that. So, for instance, anybody who is paid with a, a bonus that depends on their performance has a wage that reflects their productivity. If they are not very performant in a given year, the bonus will be low, the wage will be low. If they are very performant, the bonus will be high, the wage will be high. If you're a salesperson and you, are, you get commission on your sales, it's exactly the same feature. If you sell a lot, uh, so you're very productive for the firm, you're going to get a higher wage. If you sell a little, you're going to get a, a lower wage. Uh, and even, you know, tipping could also be a way uh, through which wages capture uh, workers' performance on the job. So there are many features of real wage contracts that tell us that wages are going to reflect somewhat productivity, or even if it's only imperfectly. Um, so so we're going to uh, take that into account. So we'll have a wage that depends on this technology parameter in the production function, which captures um, the productivity of worker. So if you want that captures labor productivity. So we'll have a wedge that depends on that labor productivity, which is a parameter. And you know, uh, the simplest form we can imagine would be to have omega here. So that's just a parameter. It's just a wedge parameter. Parameter that captures a wedge level. times A, which is our productivity, with an exponent gamma, okay? And gamma, it's another parameter. So we'll assume that it's between zero and one. And this parameter is going to capture um, the rigidity of wages. That's going to be our uh, rigid wage here. Okay, um, so gamma can be between zero and one, and that captures wedge rigidity. So there are two extreme cases. Gamma equals zero, then we get that 
the wave is equal to omega, which is a parameter. So here we are back in the situation with a fixed wave that we dealt with earlier. Gamma is equal to 1, then we'll have that the wave is omega times a. This type of situation where the wave responds one to one to the productivity. So if productivity doubles, the wage doubles, that's what we call a flexible wage. Okay? And if gamma is strictly between 0 and 1, then we have, uh, then we have a rigid wage, which is not, uh, the wage is neither fixed nor perfectly flexible, it's just rigid. And, um, but it, it turns out, so what's nice with that specification that we've just introduced, that um, the wedge is omega times the productivity to the power of gamma, is that gamma um, is something that we can uh, measure in the data. So gamma is the elasticity of the wedge with respect to um, labor productivity. Okay, uh, so why is it an elasticity? Well, that's because, um, you know, ga if we take the derivative of the log of the wedge with respect to the log of productivity, the result is gamma. Uh, so that's why we have an elasticity here. That's the definition of an elasticity. An elasticity is a, it's a, the derivative of the log of a function with respect to the log of the argument. So it's telling you the percentage change, uh, gamma is giving you the percentage change in the wage when productivity changes by uh, 1%. So that's why it's an elasticity. Um, so if you have an elasticity on one, it means that if the productivity changes by one person, the wage will change by one person. So that's what happens when you have flexible wages here. If you have an elasticity of zero, it means that if your productivity changes by one person, the wage will not change at all. That's what happens if you have fixed wages here. Um, if you have an elasticity between zero and one, it means that when your uh, productivity changes by one person, the way, so your, let's say your productivity goes up by one person, your wage will go up but it's not going to go uh, up by all the way to 1%. percent it go up by maybe 0.5%, 0.2%, 0.3%, okay? Uh, depending on what the value of the elasticity uh, uh, is, okay? Um, well, and it turns out that if you look at the data, if you follow workers over time and you see how their productivity changes, how their wages change, you find that, you know, gamma in, in the US it's, you know, between 0 0.3 and maybe 0 0.7. Okay, so it's in the interval 0 0.3, 0 0.7. So that means that if you wanted to pick just some value, if you took an elasticity of gamma is equal to 0 0.5, that seems to be kind of a reasonable uh, estimate based on US evidence. Okay, so what that means, an, an elasticity of 0 0.5, it means that if productivity goes up by 1%, your wage goes up by half a percent. Okay, that's what the evidence seems to suggest. Is that something that's good to keep in mind uh, for when we're going to do more quantitative um, analysis of the matching model? Okay, um, so we've introduced fixed wage, uh, we've introduced something that's less extreme than the rigid wage, or in terms of um, just if you want to look a little bit at the literature. So actually that type of assumption the, that was introduced in a very influential paper by Blanchard and Galli, that was published in 2010, um, so these guys introduced that type of uh, rigid wedge 
um, that type of rigid wedge uh, assumption, so a wedge function that gives you a rigid wedge. Um, and in fact, there they use gamma is equal to 0 0.5 uh, in their model. And um, in my PhD thesis, um, and that's assigned also as a, as a reading, I've also used that type of assumption and showed uh, some of its implication. And there I used a gamma that's a bit higher, 0 0.7, to show that even if you take a gamma that's quite high, you get a lot of realistic properties out of the model.